This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for coverage that you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you all to the Bet MGM studio for this edition of the OTP. I'm joined by four gentlemen for this edition of the program. I'm going to start to my left, my far left. This is Brad Willis, who has been with Titans Radio for how long? Since 2001, so what, 22 years now? I guess 23 years. Oh yeah, 20, 23 yeah. years. And your day job is? I'm the executive director of the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. This is Rhett Bryan. You have been with Titans Radio how long, Rhett? Since its inception. Since before it was Titans Radio. 1997. Yeah. So Brett, uh, Rhett is the executive producer of Titans Radio. Brett is, yes. Brett is. <laughs> Brett, it's, it's Brett. <laughs> Rhett is the executive producer of Titans Radio. This is Coach Dave McGinnis in the middle in the most important seat. He has been with Titans Radio since 2017. He has been in the NFL since 1985, coaching 31 years and now seven as a broadcaster. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You get to sit next to, to Rhett there. Rhett or Brett? E either way. And to my right is Philip Noel. How long have you been with Titans Radio? Since 2000. Since 2000, so 24 years. And yes. your day job is? I am the 911 director down in Bedford County, in Tennessee. Bedford County, Tennessee. Well, we're glad you're all here. Uh, to start you with a question, I have been asked multiple times this week, was last Sunday's game where the Titans fell to the Colts, the most bizarre game you have seen in Nissan Stadium. Your answer to that, Philip, would be? Um, I mean, with no real time to think about it, it's very high on the list. If I mean, it's, it's gotta be top three, right? I would think so. Yeah. How about you? Maybe only surpassed by 2006 against the New York Giants. The fourth quarter comeback? Yeah. 24 points in the fourth quarter. That might be the only game that I would, at Nissan Stadium. At Nissan Stadium. That I would put above it in sense of just wackiness. Rhett? The only other one I can think of is there was a Ravens game that ended weird. 2001 Monday Night Football. Yes. The quarterback sneak. Yeah. Coach, you haven't seen them all in Nissan Stadium. You've seen a lot of games around the league. How strange was that for everything that went on? The most strange. I, I saw things in that game I've never seen before with a two-point conversion going the other way. Never seen that. Never been involved in the 600-plus games I've been involved in in my career. Never seen that. I think my answer is it's the strangest game I've seen at Nissan Stadium. Yeah. For everything, for ebb and flow, for... I mean, the Titans get off to a 17-7 to lead, and then, you know, it, it all sort of falls apart. The punt block situation, the, the injury to uh, Ryan Stonehouse that occurs later, the returned, the Amadi Hooker returned for an extra point. The strangest game we've ever called, though, <laughs> easily, uh, is, is where we're headed next. We're going back to Miami for the first time since... September 9, 2018, the longest game in NFL history. It lasted seven hours and 20 minutes. Now, a few facts. Do any of you remember the final score of the game? I didn't. I don't. No, no. Miami won 27 to 20. I did not remember that. The game kicked off at 1.02 p.m. Eastern. The first delay due to lightning came with 111 remaining in the first half, and that delay lasted one hour, 57 minutes. Wow. Halftime was then reduced to three minutes and 30 seconds. Halftime. Halftime, yeah. Second delay came with 647 remaining in the third quarter and lasted two hours and two minutes. So That's we, right. So we had one minute short of four hours in delays. The game ended at 8, 10 p.m. Eastern, and at seven hours, eight minutes, was the longest game in NFL history from start to finish by one hour and 52 minutes. In 2013, <laughs> the Bears and the Ravens played a five-hour, 16-minute game. 
But this game, I mean, it's not even close. Seven hours and eight minutes. Rhett, you are the staff meteorologist. You love the weather. <laughs> Do you remember yes. going into that game, <laughs> that Sunday afternoon, that opener in 2018 in Miami, were you concerned about weather at all? Minimally. There was, I think, a 20% or less chance of anything with inclement weather. And the thing I remember as the lightning delays were happening, looking at the radar, it was, first of all, you know, at Hard Rock, when they redid all of that, they have those awnings up there, the tarps that hug the field up at the top of it. So Kind of like a gondola? Yeah, yeah. and you're, so, you know, you're, your line of sight and view, which ain't great from the booth anyway, but you couldn't see anything that looked like, you know, okay, well, that's, you know, it was just off of, you know, the coast. It was actually out in the ocean kind of, and it was one of those things where it was just inside the eight mile radius of calling a lightning delay uh, for 30 minutes. And then, you know, obviously we learned that every subsequent strike was adding another 30 minutes to that. But no, it was not one of these things where it's, boys, we got to be ready because I don't know what's going to happen. It wasn't that way with the forecast. And the weekend had started off pretty well for you guys. Jonathan Hutton, who couldn't be here because he's at a wedding, he informed me, you guys went deep sea fishing the day before? <laughs> we did. Is that true? The evening before. The evening before? The evening, yes. So you had gone out that night and decided, to, uh, didn't you catch a shark? We run, no, I, I didn't, no. It was, he I, had I, one on the hook. Tried, so we're, we're fishing with <laughs> balloons, these big balloons that act as, I guess, big bobbers, oh, if you will. Okay. So you, you throw it out, and when the large fish takes it down, the idea is the, the balloon explodes, and <laughs> <laughs> that's the coolest part. It's like a mortar hitting the water. Mike, can I say uh, something? Sure. sure. But we had one on, and... and they strap you into the barber chair and then it. Yeah, didn't they? They literally strap they, you they into do. the chair. They do, yeah. yeah. Can I add that story? And, sure. Yeah. They didn't invite me. <laughs> well, they didn't tell me. I, did, I just found out about this when I talked to Jonathan. He said, now you have to bring up the story because I think there was some feeling of regret about 6.30 Eastern time on Sunday night that you guys had Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You're a, you're We're a little more playing. tired. We're than... still playing football at 6:30 right. Eastern. We're like, oh good grief, <laughs> when's this going to end? <laughs> I mean, the second delay was was longer than the first. I one, know, but how? When did you get in from the fishing trip? You know, it was, I don't think was it was late. crazy no. late. Um, just just maybe after dark. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we but, but most of the fishing was done after dark. It yes, was in September. So we had a little yeah. bit of daylight. So we probably got back 10, 1030. OK, well, maybe that, maybe 11. Yeah, m much like the premise of Gilligan's Island. It was like a three or four hour tour. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what's crazy is he did have a shark on the line. Yeah. And, and the only reason we knew is when we pulled the line up and the piece of the bait still on the hook, I mean, it was scary looking. It looked like it had been in contact with a buzzsaw. Okay. Yeah. Like, okay, clearly something. But yeah, we did catch some fish <laughs> Phil that night. Was, Phil was the only one that caught like anything of, of note. I can't, what would you call that? Uh, it was a kingfish. Kingfish, yeah. Yeah. So, so you guys have a little backstory to this story of us staying on the air. Let's, let's get to the first <laughs> break in the action. A minute 11 to go in the first half. I remember being really confused about what they were talking about trying to get the picture of what the discussion was with the officials on the field. Do you remember who the referee was? Was it Jerome Boger? Yes, yes, it was Jerome Boger. Absolutely. Yes, so confusion was part of it. Now retired. Um, <laughs> now retired. So we were confused about that. What do you remember thinking, Brad, at the moment you knew we were going to a lightning delay? Well, first of all, you start kind of – surveying the situation because you, you're I just remember thinking in that moment I'm glad we have a plan because that was the thing that I thought really kept us from veering off the rails too quickly was is that in the weeks leading up to it we would kind of all talked and sat down and like come up with something and said if the weather at any game at any location because anytime you're in the preseason you're playing in August you know it's summertime these blow up you know storms happen not that we were necessarily like 
prepared for something to happen in Miami, but we had, we had a plan. And I just remember at the time thinking, okay, I've kind of glanced at this plan once, maybe twice, but now we're actually going to do this thing. So let's just start. And, you know, the biggest thing was, is can we just find out how long this is going to be? I mean, do we have an idea? And the thing about it was, is we never really did. You know, it's, you know, that once there's a strike, it's 30 minutes, you know, automatically. But, um, you know, once that process starts and to Rhett's point, the way that the stadium is constructed, I mean, there were times when you, I don't even think it was raining, you know, right. like you would look and you're like, it just kind of looks hazy out. So it was hard to get your head around, you know, just what this process was going to look like. Of course, then my second thought was, where's Rhett? He'll know because he, you know, he's probably already pulled up a radar somewhere and has a pretty good idea of, you know, how far this is. And at that point, you know, it's everybody dig in and, and, you know, let's just, uh, Let's follow the plan. Who was talking with Stuart Spears with the team trying to get information or talking with an official? Who, whose job was that? Well, uh, Amy, Amy Wells was on the sidelines, and, and she was the conduit of most information. Now, I don't know if Brad was texting or, or talking with other folks on via phone uh, up in the booth, but the main source was was Amy down on the field. Yeah, we were getting a lot of information from the tunnel. And God right. bless Amy's heart. <laughs> oh. You know, like she would go in the tunnel and we would lose connectivity with her from, <laughs> a, you know, because Miami's a terrible, you know, wireless frequency town because there's so many TV towers close by. So she would have to almost stand in a certain place and like, you know, hold the microphone at a certain angle before we could even hear her. So you know, she, would, on the she, would, yeah, yeah. Yeah. she would come out of the tunnel into a lightning storm to <laughs> offer us updates. I'm being told it's going to be, you know, X, you know, at least 30 more minutes. You know, well, there. let's tell the Amy part of the story. OK, yes, because I think this is an important part of the story. Amy is not here because she's on maternity leave. Family's great. She's come back first of the year. We're excited to have her. We're disappointed she's not here today because Rhett, her part of the story is really fascinating. Uh, Amy is now the sideline reporter working her first regular season game ever in the middle of all of this. And when you think about what a wonderful job she did considering what all happened, it really speaks to her talents because, Mike, I went back and looked at my notes because the sidelines are sponsored by Pinnacle. Financial Partners, member FDIC, official bank of the Titans. Visit titansbanking.com. That's right. Yes. Uh, she did 21 sideline reports that day. That's more than in some spells and periods during a season, we would go to her in three or four games. Sure. Easy. Oh, easy. Yeah. And, and were you talking with her the most, Philip? I, th I think so. She, she and I are in communication pretty much the whole game. And... When the first, like Rhett said, the way it's configured, you don't see a lot of the sky. I see virtually none of it from where I'm at in the booth. Um, but the, the, the view, the sight line to the sky is pretty limited. So the first, I remember the first rumble of thunder, thunder. And you think, I'm thinking, well, that was a little odd. Probably the PA. And then the second one hit. And I think that's when Brad and I kind of we looked at each other. Yeah. And about that same time, Amy's saying, Hey, hey, <laughs> this is this is a thing that's happening. And within, you know, just a moment, they're clearing the field. It, right. it happened that fast. Well, so and the key to Amy too, coach, is because she works for the team and at that point had been with the team for five years. She has access that 90 percent of sideline reporters don't have. So she's able to tell us exactly what the team is doing during all of this. Yeah, and I would say probably access that 100% don't have because, you know, implicit trust was important during that time. And, and Amy was right in the middle of it. I mean, you talk about eye of the storm. She went right in the middle of it, and she's down there. And plus, you know, Brent Akers and his whole ops crew, I mean, and Amy was dialed, she was dialed into everything. And I'll reiterate what Brad said. I was a little concerned because I'm not a real smart man, but I knew if we were 
delayed because of lightning, and she's standing out there waving a microphone in the middle. Which of the field, she was doing. Which, which she, she was, was doing. Yeah. She, she, would, she would appear out of the out of the tunnel. I mean, she'd come out of the tunnel like a gopher, man, and she'd come out of the tunnel. She'd start waving this thing around, and I remember looking at you going, is this a good idea? And it, and it, but she was going to get the story. She was. She was going to get the story, and she was going to get the information. And, uh, I, and was, she did. I was. I was impressed. Well, the, the incredible part is that she had all the stuff that was happening, not just from the official standpoint, but she was providing a backstory during all of this. Oh. And Brent Akers actually told us on an OTP recently the story about all the food. Let's take a listen to the Titans vice president of operations for the team, Brent Akers, so you hear the whole story about what they were trying to do with food during all of this. I want to know what really happened when the Titans played the season opener at Miami in what turned out to be the longest game in NFL history, seven hours and eight minutes. Yes. And you had the two long delays. Yes. Is the story true that someone or someone's from the ops staff went to the grocery store to get bread and peanut butter? True story. Okay. True story. We used to carry a trunk with us full of peanut butter and jelly. Okay. With all the bread in there typically, but when it happened, and I, I want to say, Mike, it was the second quarter it started. Yeah. Uh, we started making PB&Js, and the guys were hungry, so they came in, and then they changed their sweat and socks, undershirts. We started making PB&Js. Even the general manager was helping make them. <laughs> and then the second break, we started making more PB&J, and then we ran out of bananas, ran up of oranges, and then it went to half more PB&Js, and then our post-game food came, which was a uh, Mission Barbecue. So next thing you know, in the third quarter, we're eating our post-game food. Uh, and then I get a call that we're out of bread and out of PB&Js, so I go to the concessionaire, and there's a friend of mine that works for Dolphins, helped me get two more loaves of bread. So at the end of the game, I was out of peanut butter, we were out of barbecue, we were out of everything sitting there and everybody's about to lose their mind as you probably were as well. And the quarterback at the time, Marcus, said, I really just want a pepperoni pizza. So Luke Morrow on our staff, I gave him my credit card. He goes into the concourse and gets a pizza. So Marcus is eating pizza. I don't know, maybe that was the fourth quarter at that point. Okay. And then next thing you know, players see it. I want a pizza. Oh, wow. Here we go. So next thing you know, Luke's up there, and he takes a cooler, and he fills a cooler full of personal pizzas. Players eat pizza. I bet Chris and I handed out 7,000 cups of water on the side. I've never seen it anymore. I've never worked that hard for anything. Same. <laughs> I think we, we feel the same way. But the story Brent told is the story that Amy Wells was telling to our Titans radio audience as we're going through our rotations. Jonathan Hutton has a rotation. I have a rotation. Coach Mack has a rotation. We're getting weather people on the air. And we're just continuing to roll through. Brad and Rhett, I want you to describe why we felt like it was important for our radio stations from a radio functionality on Sunday afternoon of why we felt like we needed to stay on the air. Well, at that point, I'd, I'd been um, directing programming for the flagship for 12 years, ended up doing it 13 years. I'd been in situations before through NASCAR races, baseball games, any number of sporting events where they would go to a rain delay. And what you realize is, is that the ability to communicate down the line to someone in different markets across, you know, your network is, is difficult because, you know, some people are, are, you know, it's a Sunday afternoon. Some people are automated. There's a computer running your game and there's not a lot of way to do, you know, that. And, and me personally, I've been in enough situations where we'd kind of been hung out to dry that I think when we all talked about our weather plan, we even included that in the conversation. We don't, we don't want to be in a situation where Titans radio kind of hangs, you know, our, our affiliates out to dry. Um, 
So from that standpoint and from a listener standpoint, you know, I, I had people tell me after the fact, you know, like they had gotten out of church and they turn us on and then they go home and they do three or four things and they're like, all right, we're going to go out to dinner and they get in the car and we're still on the radio, <laughs> you know. Um, but it was in, in my mind, and I'm sure Rhett could speak to this too, it, you know, it was about information, but from a, from a radio perspective, from an affiliate's perspective, it was about making sure that, you know, we kind of lived up to our end of the obligation, you know, our obligation, which was cover what was happening in, in real time. And, um, and, you know, so we, we were just very steadfast that if this is, if they don't announce that this is going to be a five, six, seven hour delay, we're staying on and we're filling the time with content. Well, I mean, here's the thing, and that's the essence of what radio broadcasting is. It's what radio was distributed and made for is to distribute mass amounts of information to people. Now, this is not a life and death situation, obviously, but it's communicating. And so anybody who was listening, doing whatever on Sunday after you got out of church, I'm sure was compelled by what they are still playing. They're still on the air. And think about this. It was so long. That game was so long. The noon kicks and the three and 325 kicks, those games were all concluded. They were done before the Titans and the Dolphins got finished. That the day. Sunday night game yeah. started five minutes yeah. after we ended. Well, that, and that's the thing. It, it, TV had long since gone to do other things. They, I think they were maybe giving occasional updates. But as far as what was going on in the, in the stadium, we, we were the only way that people knew how to find out what the status of our game was for the most part. Um, the TV was out. I think the, even the other uh, Miami's radio broadcast, they had thrown it back to the studio. So, you know, that's if you were listening on Sirius, you, you weren't getting you know, much from there. So what we were doing was the only conduit of information to anybody who cared anything about this Titans game. Coach Mack went and hung out with the Dolphins. He did. Hey, Bray, we're sitting there doing the broadcast. <laughs> And he brings in like Bob Greasy, he did. <laughs> Joe Rose and Bob Greasy, Jimmy Cephalo come in the booth. They called me out in the hall because I'd stepped out in the hall when we had had. Now I'm going to show that I know about broadcasting now. Good broadcast guru. The preparation that this group made before I ever even thought about doing this. When, when Mike Keith asked me to come back to do this and I, I agreed to. One of the things after all the niceties got over with is he handed me a notebook with tabs and everything in there. He said, look, here is our procedures for various instances. Read this because you never know when it'll come up. And one of them was weather delays. Mm -hmm. And so I've had a few notebooks in my coaching career and playbooks. And so I started looking through it and I'll go, whoa, this is really detailed. It was detailed and it was detailed to the point that there was so much evergreen content. See, I know a, that term. Nice. Yeah. It's big time. It's evergreen $10 content. $10 word. But it was, it was interviews that have been done beforehand just for this reason. And it, it, was, it was really amazing. So some of that evergreen was on. So I stepped out in the hall and then uh, Bob Greasy grabbed me and then Cephalo came up and, and, and they said, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and they, they were said, real happy to they, still be there. No, they said, Coach yeah. Max, seriously, what are you guys talking about in there? And I went, hey, we got a plan. I said, we got, we got plenty to talk about. And he said, well, we're throwing it back to the station. You know, we're throwing it back to the station and you know, we're getting ready to just go hang out. And I, so I came back in and, and when I did come back in, now we had been doing it for a while and normally- This during, was in the second delay you The second delay, yeah. yeah, the second delay. They said, what are you guys doing? So, but I came back in and everybody's hungry because they'd been out fishing all night. But, <laughs> but, 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 but and we get, caught no dinner. Yeah, but we caught no dinner. But you, you get a chance when you're broadcasting at halftime to, you know, get, get some food and, and so, I said, you know, we don't have any food. I said, I'll find some food. So I go up to the suites because I know a few people in this league. And I went up to the suites and, the, you know, where the coaches' wives are hanging out and, and some play. And they, there was pizzas stacked up there for them. And I went to somebody that I knew in there and said, y'all eating all of these? No, Coach Mack, you want, you, want, you want some? I said, I want all of them. <laughs> so I brought about four boxes of pizza back he in. He saved the day. I brought really about four boxes pizza of pizza ever. back in and, and, and delivered it to the guys, and, and here we go. Because we didn't get to eat at halftime. No. It had passed dinner. Mm -hmm. 
And it's not like we eat a lot in pregame anyway. No. Now, on the, <laughs> on the plane going back, we're all famished, and they generally have food for the team. You heard Brent Akers talk about they delivered the postgame food. So as we are headed to the buses, they have postgame food that you can get, or you can wait and eat on the plane, or in some cases, both. When we, when we were headed down after it was over, there was nothing to eat. And by the time we got on the plane, it was 10 o'clock Eastern time. Mm. And if that pizza had not been there, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> so thank you, Coach. Thanks, I Coach. never knew where you got the pizza. I, I felt like you just stole it. I did. And what well, would you <laughs> kind of ask? ask. Yeah. I kind of asked. Yeah. Ask, Which but... sort of makes me feel a little better because I, I've always, for years, I felt like you just ripped off that pizza. And well, they <laughs> asked. Did. <laughs> the, the person thought I wanted a slice of pizza. And I said, no, I want all of them. <laughs> the boxes. You saved the day. Well, it's it was I, just a just a small contribution, but wow. Amy Wells was dying <laughs> that, that, because yeah. they did they they did not share anything with her. I think she finally stole a banana. Didn't didn't the, Coach Vrabel have like a sandwich that he was going to finish? The and best story she well, I, my, one of my favorite stories that she tells from that is <laughs> the, the, somehow everybody was getting PB and J's, and Coach Vrabel had a sub sub sandwich. And it was just sitting on a, I think, a road case of some sort. And, they had, and he's, his hair's on fire and doing 18 different things. Sure. So he's not eating the sandwich. And she's staring at the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and she's probably the only one in, in the entire organization that at this point hasn't had access to food. To anything. To, to nothing. Yeah. I don't and even know. And she's freezing and wet. Yeah. And she, you know, because that was one of the problems in the locker room is they come in and they're all wet because it did rain at the end of the first half. Mm -hmm. And so they're all sweaty and wet and they can get out of stuff. And the air conditioning was blowing like crazy so they could get out of all the wet stuff. She can't. And so she's dying and she's hungry. And listen, She's incredibly grumpy when she's hungry. <laughs> when she we invented the term hangry. Oh, uh, no, I'll say it. I mean, she is, when we first interviewed her for her job, we went to a Chinese place to have lunch. And she was sitting there chatting and she was impressing us with, you know, her knowledge and everything. And we just kind of liked her. And then she won me because during the course of the end of the, the conversation, she looked at one, I think it was all guys that were with her. I can't remember who all the group was, but she looked at one of the guys and she goes, you gonna finish that? <laughs> <laughs> so she took the rest of his Kung Pao chicken and put it away. I said, I like her. I said, that, that's my, but, so this is the person who's, ha who's wet and has had no food and and it's three feet from a sandwich she can't touch. She can't touch. She can't touch. <laughs> yeah. Because it's Mike Vrabel's first game. Right. Yeah, that's now, right. Today, having been with him for 99 games, she would have taken the sandwich. Sure. Absolutely. No chance. That but day. she was tempted. But she was tempted. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and she Mike, was telling us as much. That's such a great picture. To and paint. Mike, the other thing I remember about this, so at some point we're on the air long enough, Brad looks at me and goes, we need new batteries for her stuff. That's right. And I'm like, you're exactly right, because the belt pack, which is, you know, uh, part of the, the frequency stuff and the, the wire, wireless handheld mic, I'm like, I got to go down. And so I go down, I get find her, we get her batteries, and I get a glimpse of what she's reporting on, what all is going on. It's crazy. So you talk about people that love weather. Of course, Brett Kern is the weather guy, and he and Ryan suck up. And I have a couple other guys were hovered around a, a tablet looking at the radar. And of course, I'm asking, hey, what's, what's the latest? What do you see? And um, they're just hanging out outside the locker room looking at the weather situation. And we get our batteries replaced and, uh, and I get back upstairs. The other thing I'm thinking, too, is we, you're right. We had evergreen long form interviews that we ran. And bless him, Larry Stone, the godfather of Titans Radio knew how long we were on the air and sent us electronically some archival files that he had. Yeah, he hadn't worked for us in five, we hadn't worked with us in five years. Right. Still a friend, but hasn't worked with us in and five had years. had some great stuff like uh, the, the interview that he did with Mr. Adams for the anniversary of the AFL and you know all these things and that, those kinds of things got us through. Because we needed 
10 minute breaks to reset everybody. We had a feature that we had put together in the weeks leading up that were about weather oddities. You know, that we were like, if we ever get into a weather delay, it, it would kind of be cool to talk about what was the, the hottest game, the coldest game. Right. All that. So we had like this 10 minute feature that was put together that was good content that was, you know, entertaining and informative. But to your point, it gave you a chance to just like take your headset off for, for three or four minutes and collect your thoughts or make a restroom run or anything that you needed to do because Again, the first one was an hour 50 and the second hour one was, 57. The second one was 202. So we had we had windows where we had, you know, to get things done. I just remember being we didn't stay on the air as like a dare. Like, you know, when we when we went into it, you know, like we weren't just like, let's just see if we can do this. This was the plan. Right. It was it was Hold my beer. It was the plan. Y'all watch, watch this. this. It, watch was the, it was the plan. And, and I remember and I had forgotten about it, but you, we we heard the first rumble of thunder. And we we're like that. That felt awful close. And then we heard the second rumble of thunder, and, and it's and, real. And it's real. And then you see everybody scatter and get off the field. And and you know it's funny. You you asked me what I remember. The next thing I remember is three different, four different people pulling three ring binders out of a bag, opening it up, and going, "Click, here's the weather plan." Because we had it. I mean, we still we, we still do. I brought it. There brought it is. It. Yeah, it's laminated now. Um, it's fancy. It's fancy. <laughs> Phil, Phil, Phil did this. Thank you, Phil. But everybody, I mean, to, to a man, everybody in the group pulls, pulls the folder out, clicks the three ring binder, pulls it, and starts running, running the play. We go to break. We reset. We, we come back. We, we get scores. Well, because the thing about radio, too, is that we know this is not 1945. You're not listening to FDR's fireside chat with the radio <laughs> on and waiting for programs to come. Right. You're in and out of the car. And you're, you know, you're waiting to pick up a kid at ball practice or whatever that is. And so we're trying every 15 minutes to reset it so you don't think, oh, this is a replay. Right, right. Because we're knowing you've driven to Kroger. You're listening to this. You're thinking, this is kind of nuts. <laughs> you go into Kroger. You do your shopping. When you get back in the car 30, 45 minutes, you need to be reset again and so we you know we're doing things behind the scenes trying to figure out what we're going to do but we're also trying to keep people and we do that on the broadcast i mean we we know i mean one of the challenges that we had when we got here was church mm -hmm. because people we thought initially we would be a 305 kickoff city we thought we were going to be in that bunch that's the way we had talked to the league about it because there were so many people that said initially, um, well, we can't get to a game at noon because we get out of church at noon. Yeah. Well, so we still respect that. So if you listen to us now, at about 12.15 or 12.20, you're going to hear the score a lot because we know people are just getting to their cars out of church. Right. And th that's cool. I mean, so you take care of the whole audience any way that you can. Now, what's interesting is that churches now do different services at different times. Yeah. So, it, you know, all of those things factored in, that kind of thought process factored into that day, just knowing that people are, you know, kind of doing different things. And then it I, became they're going to church on Sunday night. Yeah, they went to church right, on Sunday night right, and right, came right, out. Right, and right. They, were yeah. <laughs> they were done with church. They had the potluck and they were, at seven o'clock they came out, they go, this is still going on. I have a question for everyone here about what, what was a moment or something you remember, an oddball thing for me in this case, of like, this is really a long, this is a thing. This is a long day. And the thing that hit me was, I remember you and Mac in, I don't know, it was the first delay, second delay, all that kind of bl blends together, but you were looking at the Ring of Honor and discussing the names. Mm -hmm. Boy, Larry Little was, you know. He's a great and, guard. And I remember sitting to myself going, boy, this is something, man. They <laughs> are. This is, but I thought it was a great idea. I'm like, hey, Phil, Phil, fill the time, fill the time. But I'm like, God, this is a, this is something else. This is really going to be a long day. Well, Mike Keith, in one of those evergreen moments, he's talking about we re you collected. He said, "Hey, Coach Mac, we come back on the air. We're going to go through this Ring of Honor." He said, "You've been in the league long enough. You can give me a little thumbnail on all these guys." 
And he said, just give me a little thumbnail sketch and we'll, and I said, okay. And so we started in on that and I'm, you know, as we, as we start going through it, I'm going, I don't know how he thought of that, but that was really pretty clever to, to do that. I mean, I remember that cause I'm sitting there. And the other thing that he said was, look, as we go through this and I know we haven't prepared this, he said, play like you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> he said, <laughs> I remember that conversation <laughs> too. <laughs> when, we, when we talk about Nick Monacani, <laughs> I said, Mike, I can do it. I can. It was, but just the preparation part of it, uh, it was unusual. I, you know, I was involved in the fog bowl. Yes. The playoff the game. Bears Eagles playoff game, which was at that time, the most unusual and, and is still one of the ones on top of the, on top of this one. But the, the game wasn't delayed because of that. This was a whole different animal. We were riding in whole different animal. All right, so I need to remind Titans fans, it's always game on with Duncan. So grab a coffee and kick off the action, whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before listening at home. Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time, which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. All right, so... I want to throw out some other interesting facts about the game. See if you have comments on them. Okay. Uh, Deion Lewis, first game as a Titan, 16 carries, 75 yards. He caught five passes for 35 yards. Derrick Henry, 10 rushes for 26 yards, but he had a 62-yard touchdown called back mm -hmm. on a holding call by Delaney Walker that was very questionable. Very far away from the ball. Call. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hmm. Each team scored 17 points in the fourth quarter. Well, that's right. Each team had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Jakeem Grant, 102 yards. Darius Jennings, 74 yards. Darius Jennings, that's right. It was longer than that, I think, but yes. Okay. Marcus Mariota threw two interceptions after a hit from William Big Play Hayes caused numbness in his arm. He was replaced by Blaine Gabbard, who also threw an interception. Uh, Rashad Jones for Miami had two of the interceptions. On one of his returns, Adrian Branch blindsided Taylor Lewan and knocked him out. He would miss the game the next week against Houston. A huge fight broke out. There were penalties thrown after the fact, but no penalty on the hit. Delaney Walker was lost for the year as he suffered a broken ankle, ankle. while being yeah. tackled by T.J. McDonald. He would miss the rest of the season. Ryan Tannehill was playing his first game in over 600 days after suffering an ACL injury during the 2017 preseason. He threw for 230 yards with two touchdowns and two interceptions. Six months later, March 15th, 2019, Tannehill was obtained by the Titans with a sixth round pick in exchange for a 2019 seventh round pick and a 2020 fourth round pick. Pretty good trade for the Titans. Yes. The 2019 sixth round pick that the Titans obtained ended up being anyone, anyone? David Long Jr. David Long Jr., who now plays for? The Miami the Dolphins. Dolphins. How weird is that? <laughs> yeah. right. Well, the circle in the National Football League yeah. is this big. Derrick Henry is the only Titans starter who remains from that game. Wow. Wow. Linebacker Jerome Baker and cornerback Xavier Howard are the only Dolphins starters remaining from that game. Five years ago. Uh, yeah, just five years ago. Yeah. That's crazy. A lot happens. Adam Gase was the Dolphins coach. He was fired at the end of that season, which was his third. He was immediately hired by the New York Jets, where he coached for two years. Gase has not coached since. And he's still just 45 years old. National Football League. All right. Here's my favorite. The Titans' strong safety in that game was Kenny Vaccaro. His sister, Keita, is now married to the Cheetah, Tyreek Hill. <laughs> only, only on the wow. OTP. Only on the OTP. <laughs> Mike that's, Keith. A, that's the fact you didn't need to know, but I just couldn't leave it out because I, know I knew Coach Mack would give you a good you, reaction. You talk about details. We talked about his whole details. That is Mike Keith. So 
<laughs> Mike Vrabel's first game, he goes back to Miami now for Monday night football in his 100th game. Um, talk, if you would, from just a coaching perspective. Has any head coach in the National Football League ever had a stranger first game and then a stranger situation leading into week two to play Houston, who is the AFC South champion, than Mike Vrabel went through in that very short period of time? No, no. And, and I say that because I haven't experienced every game. I've experienced a lot of them, and I know the history of this league. But living that, you were thinking, wow. And, you know, I'd just been a head coach, and I'm going, how is he managing all of the things that you have to manage, not only physically, but just the atmosphere that you've got to be able to, to stop, start, and recreate after all of this? No. The answer is no to that. Rhett, Brian, what's your overriding memory of this experience? 2018 in Miami, the NFL's longest game. First of all, relief that it was over. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said otherwise. Uh, hope we don't revisit anything that long again. Uh, but I do, I, I do think frequently about that and going into week two at home against the, the Houston Texans and how they basically had to start all over with the playbook because you had no left tackle, you had no right tackle, you had no star tight end, you had no starting quarterback. Uh, you know, you had a, a, a trick play on special teams to get your first score. Uh, you know, Kevin Byer to Dane Crookshank for 66 yards. Uh, it's just wild to think and just think. It seems like yesterday, but it seems like a long time ago. So, you know, when you're thinking this is Mike Vrabel's 100th game as head coach of the Titans, it's like, boy, that went really fast. Brad? In some ways, I still feel like I'm there. <laughs> 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 I mean, it. it I just remember being so happy that it was finally over, being mentally fried just from all of the, I mean, there was so much going on behind the scenes that typically wouldn't happen on a typical, you know, game day. But also, I also kind of just remember, like, once we realized it was the longest game in NFL history, like this strange sense of pride that, like, mm -hmm. we were a part of something that was pretty cool, you know. Um that, that to me was kind of the biggest takeaway that like when we left, you know, it was like, hey, we did what we said we were going to do. You know, we 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 stayed on. We we delivered content. We delivered, you know, entertainment, information. And, you know, the game did. The only thing that would have made that better is that the game result been different and the Titans had won that day. Uh, but, you know, I tell people a lot of times, you know, we, we don't have really any, any kind of say-so or control about what happens on the field. We can just kind of do the radio thing. And I felt like we, we kind of did our part that day. Philip? Well, I, th I think one thing we certainly want to mention is, uh, is Jonathan Hutton, who was, who, who's not able to be with us today. But mm -hmm. he quarterbacked a lot of those segments sure did. Through, through that. Uh, and just did a, a masterful job, as he always does and did. Uh, uh, guiding through many of those parts. But, you know, as long as we've all done this now, it's uh, just, I could, speaking personally, it's hard for me to retain all of the things over 25 years. So at this point, you, you try to retain moments. And this was certainly, I think, in the top, top five, maybe top three moments uh, that we've, experiences in, uh, in Titans Radio. And, and like Brad said, when you're in it, you're, you know, you're, okay, how long is this going to go? This is, we, you know, you're, you're, you're exhausted. And then when it's over, there is that certainly that sense of pride of, of what you did. And then you start realizing, well, nobody's ever done this. This is, this is the longest that anyone's ever done it. And we just did that. And we live to tell the tale. It's one of the reasons we wanted to go out and do the games in 2020 during, right. during COVID. Um, and we owe it to the fans. We, I think you, I hope people got the experience with us. Right. And I, I hope, and that's what Amy did so well. And you, I'm glad you said that about Jonathan because he did such a big job. But I, I hope 
I mean, I, I would love to meet the person who listened for all seven hours and eight minutes. <laughs> I think there were several. There were some. Honestly, I, yeah. I think that, there was a lot yeah, of there social some, media. Some morbid curiosity after a while. It's like, yeah, are they really going to finish this thing? Uh, talking about the game and the broadcast, are they going to finish this thing? Which was longer than the seven and hours and eight minutes. when you Well, yeah, because we did the hour pregame yeah. and we did the full postgame, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. I mean, we were on yes. air that day essentially for nine hours. Yeah. Which, you know. But you, did the, yeah, did the full post because we've got breaks to play too. You so. hope to bring. That's right. Which we we played all the breaks. <laughs> most by, of them, yeah, yeah, the, the most sponsors of them got their yeah. money's worth. They got some oh, yeah. yeah, they yeah. got some. But we're still playing breaks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we like breaks. We we're all for breaks. But you know, you just want to bring people into what the experience was. Mm -hmm. And I think I hope that's what we did. I'm also proud that this is the first time we've ever really talked about this. Yeah. Mm. Because to us. That's the job. Yeah. And that's what I'm proudest about of, of you guys and of everybody we work with is, I mean, nobody expected a medal or, I mean, we did do t-shirts. Got a t-shirt. We got a t-shirt. Yeah, we all, we all have t-shirts. But, <laughs> I mean, this, this is the job. That's yeah. what you do. You know, you show up and you, you broadcast the game, right? My, well, let me just say this. Okay. And, again, I'm the – newest member of this group and have got some but my life experiences in the national football league i mean when you're when you're part of a coaching staff i mean you've got to be on point and everybody else around you you have to trust and you know after this you know had gone on and i was new to the radio game i went wow these dudes really know what they're doing they really know what they're doing, and this is a cool team to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Because he, uh, Brad said it very well. We, we've got no control now. What you know, what goes on? I used to have a lot of control. What went on in the field? We've got none now. But the pride that that you started, Larry Stone started, you started, and you guys have been part of of what Titans Radio is. It's a pretty cool thing to be a part of. And I, I, I felt that leaving there too. I went, whoa, and just knowing that. Nobody else would have done it because there was another group that had a chance to, and they didn't. So that's my maybe point. they were smart. That's, that's <laughs> maybe, well. maybe they were. My, maybe, they're, maybe they're doing the official Dolphins podcast, <laughs> laughing at us they're right talking. now. Which I mean, I wouldn't blame them if they did. They had pizza. They had, and the other thing too that Jonathan reminded me of. Is we took the gear out, we went through J Lo's J dance J -Lo's club, club. Yeah. Yeah. and there were literally people dancing. Yeah, uh, it was. It's a club. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There is a club club section. I'd like to think Bob Greasy's doing a podcast today, talking about how he got to take a nap during the longest <laughs> game. <laughs> That's one Matt. thing I, I remember during the, the second delay <laughs> when we're really in it. I, I had stepped out of the door for my may, may have gone to the restroom. I don't know, but I stepped out in the hall for a moment. And it's a really tight area yeah, right not, there. And not, they're, they're yeah. right next to us. And, and you see Bob Greasy, and, which is kind of surreal in he's itself. Bob Greasy. Bob Greasy. Yeah. And he's at the coffee machine, and he's just, he's, he's, Bob's not happy. Bob's a little upset that, that this thing's still going. And so then you realize, well, this is, you know, that's when, that's when it kind of hit me that, well, the, I know they're not on the air anymore. They're, they're coming back for updates, but... We're still in it, and we're and we're 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 fully committed. We're all in it. Um, they're not. Bob's still not happy, but, <laughs> but he was, Bob's missing. But, but he's, he's in the Hall of Fame, he, and he, he was on the perfect seventy-two Dolphins. So, he was. Yeah, he gets. I mean, he gets so he's a lot got of great. He's, he's okay. He's, he's, he's going to be yeah. all right. But Mike, that was that was the moment that it was just kind of a wow. Moment. Sure. I think that is one of the things that makes Titans Radio something that fans want to listen to. Is that Everybody sitting in these chairs and the people we've mentioned in Amy Wells and Jonathan Hutton and anybody who's been on this broadcast, we all have the same goal that we want to deliver. We want to deliver what, and, and because we all have the same goal, there's five people here and two people not here on this podcast that, that it's our family. Yeah. That we, we all, we just go dig in together. Shouldn't we say something about Jordan Tinkle too? Yes. Yeah. He was he JC, was writing. He was, he was our scoreboard yes. writer back in the day. I mean. He was at the studio for the whole thing. He, he was. wasn't in Miami with us, but he's another one that, that was. That entire group. I mean, they were just as, you know, kind of handcuffed to the whole situation. Yep. 
you know, as we were. So for, for and they were wishing they worked on the Dolphins <laughs> broadcast at that point. <laughs> well, he's writing updates during the game that, that oh, are yeah. supposed to last two minutes. And he's got, you know, there's a lot of content. And, but, and so now we're, we're deep into this, and he's still writing updates with a lot less content, and For now late we need games. them to be five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he, he was yeah, a he's a pro. Integral part. Well, and you you sure. just said it, and I think that going back to what Rhett said, I think there's two reasons that it worked. I think that it, I think everybody in our group kind of likes to kind of go under the mantra of just be a pro, right? And that's and so if somebody says that, that guy's a pro, that's really one of the highest honors you can get, you know, in in my mind, and I think a lot of people's mind. The thing, the other thing that I think benefited us is that this that this group really likes each other. They like being around each other. So if you stuck really us like in a room me. and said, just just have a bunch of conversations and fill time. I, I don't know about you. I wasn't invited to go fishing. I was not. <laughs> so, I, I said uh, that at the jump of this. They're talking I mean, about deep talking sea about fishing. talking about how much you all like We're each deep other. Sea fishing, somebody didn't get invited. And I'm in my room boat. eating a grilled cheese sandwich. I'm, so, <laughs> I don't know There's what I was doing. You want to go fishing? No. <laughs> We can, we can make that happen. <laughs> we have been known to have a good time. And, and Mike, the, all other, together. the other person we should mention is is David Drobny and his staff at, at Nash Severe Weather. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Um, still one of the best follows on X, Twitter, whatever it's called this week, Elon. Um, super, super big time in keeping us abreast of what was going on with what was happening with the lightning delays and the weather that day. And, and, and still is always there. St- we need him. Still, still right there, just a text or a phone call away. A friend of the program. 100%. Seed Geek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, Seat Geek is the place to do it. Seat Geek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming in and doing this OTP to talk about the longest game in NFL history and our experience. I wasn't really keen on doing it because of the idea that I don't ever want it to sound like we're, oh, look at us, you know. But if we're going to share it with people and we're going to share the experience, uh, we should do it on the official Titans podcast. And so I appreciate you uh, being willing to do it. The the funny, the not so funny, the in between, the behind the scenes, the time that Brad mysteriously disappeared into J Lo's club. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what that was all about. I'll tell you that after. Jenny for the block. It'll be on the OTP the unofficial after hours. After. <laughs> <laughs> for Brad Willis, Rhett Bride, Coach Dave McGinnis, and also Philip Noel. I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for the OTP.